Okay, great. Uh, welcome everyone to the Test View Conference. Uh, this is your host for the day. My name is Saf. Uh, I'll be the host for the session. Uh, we're going to talk about testing as a service today. And we're going to talk about how testing computer stuff can be tricky, how different teams don't always do things the same way. And how doing things again and again is not a good idea, actually, right? Uh, before we begin, there are uh, a few important notices in terms of housekeeping, right? Uh, this session is recorded, so in case you need to drop off midway, that's not a problem. You'd be able to rewatch the entire session uh, from the test me event by going to the schedule section uh, on the website or on the panel itself. Uh, we'll also have a dedicated Q&A round at the end of the session, so feel free to post your sessions in the questions in the uh, Q&A window on the right side of the screen, and we're going to take them up at the end of the session, right? Uh, one special request, please make use of emojis to keep the session interactive. Uh, you can find them towards the bottom of the screen. Perfect. So I have our speaker for the session. Uh, please welcome Mesut here. Uh, with over 13 years of experience spanning across industrial automation, IoT platforms, cloud services, and more, uh, Mesut's journey is both impressive and inspi inspiring for all of us. Uh, an adept in test automation and CICD integration, uh, Mesut has been driving up the force for continuous testing for a long time now. So, Mesut, the stage is yours now. Thanks, Saif. Thanks a lot. So, let me start my presentation. All right. Cool. So, hello, everyone. Uh, I hope everybody is having a great day and enjoying the amazing conference. I'm very happy to be here. Uh, because I believe this is an amazing event. Uh, there's a great uh, speaker lineup. And I saw a couple of uh, different talks. There are great talks. And this is a software testing conference, right? So we are discussing a lot about quality assurance, ensuring the quality. Whenever we are developing something or delivering something, of course, we are trying to do that with a quality. But of course, not only with quality, with a high speed as well. So everybody is discussing about doing something with quality, with high speed, with efficiency. So this is what I will also do. I will discuss about ensuring the quality, quality assurance because this is a software testing conference. We are all uh, testing something and we are trying to ensure the quality in the products that we are developing. And of course, doing that with a high speed because imagine like if we try to stop the release, like give me a few, a few days I will execute my tests and then we can release. Of course, everybody will complain, right? How about, what are you meaning like stopping the release for a couple of days? It's not acceptable nowadays. Nowadays, we are having the continuous integration, continuous delivery. So not even days, but of course, if I have even a couple of hours to execute my test cases in the pipelines, people will start complain about the execution duration. So time is very precious. So we will talk about uh, improving the execution duration, improving the uh, implementation of the test cases and execution of the test cases. So what I will discuss today is testing as a service, which will enable us to improve our test implementation and the test execution. So we will implement a test solution and we will share this solution to the other teams and to the other people. So this will be like a service which will be shared with the other people because we will be trying to handle some problems. We will try to resolve some problems, some issues. And then whenever we have a solution, when we develop something, then we can share this with the other people because maybe some other people can also get some advantage of uh, this solution. Maybe some other people are also uh, trying to handle the same problem, same the same type of issues. So this will be the testing as a service, which we will be sharing with other teams and the other people in our organization. Before going uh, forward, le uh, a very brief introduction about myself. My name is Misut and I'm doing testing uh, around 15 years. And nowadays for a couple of uh, years, I'm living in Japan. Uh, I'm working for Indeed, which is a, a job seeking platform. Uh, and uh, I'll talk about uh, some applications that we are testing uh, during the slides. And uh, yeah, I will explain 
how uh, we are trying to develop some reusable test cases and trying to avoid duplication. So let's go and uh, see what we will discuss during this talk. So this is the very brief agenda. I will start with uh, the first part, which will be the section where we even uh, do some preparations before we start developing our solution. This is the stage even before we start developing our solution. And then the next stage, the second round is developing the solution itself. And the third round is the next stages, even after we develop and we share with the other people, we are still not done. We should still continue to maintain our solution. It will be the continuous monitoring, continuous maintenance, and supporting the people uh, that uh, we share our solution and uh, how uh, we can support or uh, we can meet their requirements or additional uh, maybe change requests or additional feature requests. So let's start with the first part, the preparation. Like what do we need even before uh, starting our implementation? What kind of analysis we should do? And what is the problem itself starting from uh, the first things first? So let's do the uh, problem definition uh, first. First of all, so I encountered this issue a lot of times, especially working in the big or organizations. There are a lot of teams and sometimes I'm having some problems. I'm having, having some issues and after struggling a lot, after spending some time, eventually I figure out that some other teams are also having the same problems or they already had it and they already solved it. But of course, it is uh, understandable, right? In a very big organization, we cannot spread the information 100% uh, among the whole teams all the, or uh, the, everyone in the organization. So it is not easy to spread the information and the solution to everyone. So sometimes we may struggle with the same type of problems, maybe not exactly the same, but uh, similar type of issues or the problems. So which means, we are trying to solve our problems in different ways, in different teams, or maybe by uh, different members of the uh, same team. So which means we are not having a standard approach sometimes. Everyone is trying to solve their uh, problem in a different way, and they try to develop their own approach to uh, tackle those uh, problems or the issues. And this means also we are having sometimes duplication, like duplication of the uh, coding, du duplication of the effort, and duplication of uh, the uh, time that we spent on uh, solving the problems. And sometimes it, it may even affect our code quality, right? Because since we don't have a standard approach, everyone is having a, a casual implementation way, then uh, it means we may have some uh, code quality issues as well. So let's see what I mean in, in a better way. If I uh, share a uh, a concrete example, I, I guess it would be more understandable. So this is a very simple scenario. It is super simple. And in this uh, scenario, we try to execute one uh, very simple test case in which we try to locate a button on a web page. And after clicking that, we will assert the label on the button uh, will match with an expected string. This is the uh, super sim simple test case. For even this super simple and short test case, we can still say that there are four different ways of implementing this uh, test uh, case. I mean, uh, there are at least four ways, but I'm sure there can be some uh, other ways as well. But this is just to illustrate there may be different ways to implement the same scenario in different ways. And it is regardless of the language or the technology that we are using. In this particular example, I share a code which was implemented by Cypress test framework, but it can be with uh, any other thing. The key point here is there are lots of different ways to achieve the same uh, target or to uh, implement the same problem. So for this, we can see there are uh, different ways. There is no standard approach. But additionally, since everyone is having their same, uh, own approach, some of them may have some anti-patterns that we want to avoid. So there is no guarantee that we don't have any code quality issues if everyone is having uh, their own approach. So this is one risk, right? So the proposal here is the alternative way to achieve this is instead of 
implementing this scenario from scratch with uh, casual or uh, independent implementations, we propose a central framework in which the target is already achieved, the problem that we want to solve is already implemented, and we share this solution to everyone. So what everyone will do is, instead of uh, implementing this uh, algorithm or the problem from scratch, just calling the relevant method or the function, which was implemented in the central framework, which will be a part of testing as a service. So testing as a service can be uh, used in, in, uh, as a terminology in different ways. But what I mean is just implementing our solution and providing this as a package or any other uh, way to share with different people. So there will be some different packages to cover common uh, functions or the features. Like, for example, when we are doing the testing uh, activities, we are having some problems that is encountered uh, in lots of different projects. Like, regardless of what project I'm uh, testing or what product I'm testing, most probably I will have some API queries, GraphQL queries, or maybe uh, I'll have some locating elements on the web pages if it's a UI automation. So these uh, kind of common problems would be encountered regardless of the project or the product that I'm testing, right? So these will be the targets and the components of the testing as a service. If I have a package in which there are different classes which will implement these uh, queries or uh, which will be performing these kind of common uh, needs which will be uh, required in different projects or the different products, then everyone uh, can use it even in different types of products on the projects. So this is our target. And if we achieve this, what will be the advantages? What will be the benefits of this uh, achievement? First of all, we will be developing a standard way of uh, implementation or the execution, right? Because if everyone is having the same method or the function, then we will ensure that the way to perform these test steps would not be in lots of different ways, but we will know what is being followed to implement these test cases. Because we already know what function or method is shared with people and what they are calling. And see if we somehow ensure the code quality inside the implementation, the relevant implementation, we will be avoiding different anti-patterns. In the previous example, we saw that there are some dummy weights, right? Normally, we don't want to uh, add them or co cover them in our test implementation. And in our implementation in the central framework, since it will be already implemented by the test uh, experts or the domain experts by uh, doing a comprehensive analysis and doing a code quality checks, then we will be ensuring that all the potential risks and the code quality issues would be eliminated. And other than, other than that, of course, the duplication would be removed because everyone would not be implementing from scratch again and again. Everyone will just call directly the relevant function to uh, maintain their uh, requirement or the need to perform their test cases. And on top of that, this will be like removing the duplication and providing a common solution. But on top of that, inside the central framework, we can uh, provide some additional features, like maybe the, some monitoring features. Uh, whenever we perform our test cases, we can already track different metrics, which will be already uh, performing during the test execution. This will be a part of the test uh, as testing as a service. And when people are using our solution, which we will share to the others, then they would be already improving their monitoring activities or the uh, even the uh, traceability of the implementation and the execution activities. Cool. So this is the problem and the uh, proposal. But to achieve this, what kind of roadmap we should follow? Because to achieve our target, we should have a plan, right? Concrete plan. We should have some uh, different uh, stages, uh, different checkpoints. So the roadmap to achieve this target is, first of all, defining the objectives and the key results. Because we need to know if our proposal is working in the way that we expect. For example, if we expect some advantages and the benefits, but if our solution does not make any change or does not make any contribution to this uh, in terms of these advantages or the b benefits, then we can conclude it is not working in the uh, expected way.
But how can we understand? Of course, we need some objectives and the key metrics. We should be able to compare the expected situation uh, with the actual situation. Like, uh, for example, if we target improving the test uh, implementation speed, for example, uh, instead of spending maybe 10 days to implement the feature, if we are targeting uh, spending only one day, then this is already a key metric, right? The time that I'm spending on implementing test cases. So I should be able to track this metric. I should be able to measure the time that I'm spending and it, it should be uh, transparent. It should be visible and I should be able to track this continuously to understand whenever I provide my solution, if it is really helping people to achieve this target or not. And then after defining the objectives and the key metrics, we can collect different requirements. Oh, okay, we will try to implement some solution, but what will be the components of this solution? What are the requirements that I will include in my uh, central framework? This will be re requirements. And after I collect several requirements, of course, I can do a prioritization to decide from which feature I can start uh, my implementation and from which I can continue, so on and so forth. For example, starting with the objectives and the key metrics, let me share a couple of them to uh, better uh, explain you what I mean by uh, setting some objectives and the key metrics. In the beginning of the slide, I explained to you, we are discussing ensuring quality. When, whenever we are developing some products, we try to ensure the quality in the products that we are developing and delivering. And we try to do that with a high speed, with a high efficiency, right? These are the two different dimensions. This is, I, I believe this is the motivation of the quality assurance teams, ensuring the quality, improving the speed or the fast delivery. So these are the two fundamental components. So my key metrics are aligned with two different dimensions. In terms of the quality, of course, we can check the test coverage. Like what kind of features are already covered by the test cases? But as we already know, the uh, test coverage itself does not mean too much. Like if I have 100 uh, test coverage or let's say 90% uh, test coverage, what does it mean? It doesn't really mean too much. But on top of that, not only qu quantity, but also quality. Like what is the capability of my, my test cases to find the issues, to detect the vulnerabilities, to detect the weaknesses of the product? Then if we combine these two, like the coverage, the quantity of the test cases and the quality of the test cases, they are capable of uh, finding the issues. Then we can uh, have an idea, have an insight about the quality of the test cases or, or the quality of the features that we are developing. On the other hand, in terms of the fast delivery, what kind of features or metrics we can track? Like, of course, we can track the automation ratio because most of the time automation is faster than manual testing. Not necessarily, but most of the time. This is one metric that we can track. But of course, similarly, not only that, but also the execution duration, because I might have 100% automation ratio, but still my test cases might be slowly running, right? So I can track which test cases are slowly running or which are uh, already uh, running in an efficient way. So execution duration and even the implementation duration, like whenever a feature is released, how much time do I need to implement the relevant test cases? Or even can I do the parallel implementation whenever the feature is designed in the first place? Can I already start my test preparation? In the meantime, as the development teams are uh, doing their development activities. This, this is the ideal case. But sometimes there, there, there might be some uh, gaps or uh, some uh, time difference between the feature release and implementation. So what is the time that I need to implement my test cases? And other than that, uh, maybe I can track the false alarm ratio. Like when I execute my test cases, what percent of the test cases are uh, reporting the correct results, but, where, but, but what percentage is the false alarms? This is one track, uh, the one metric that I can track. And even for those kind of false alarms, uh, similarly, what time do I need to fix those test failures? These are all the key, key metrics uh, aligned with the two dimensions, 
uh, in terms of our motivation to ensure the quality. And we can continue to track this to understand if our uh, proposal is helping or contributing to the people. I will show you uh, in practice if it is really working after we uh, implement our solution. So first, I will explain uh, the way to implement the solution. And in the third stage uh, of the talk, I will explain uh, the interpretation of this key matrix. But for now, let's proceed. So after defining the objectives and the key metrics, we can collect the challenges that people are having. So in my practical example, I talk with several teams in my organization to understand what kind of common problems all the teams are having. For example, when I talk to people, sometimes they were complaining like the uh, tools that they were using were not capable of covering all the execution platforms. Like sometimes they want to uh, cover different browsers, including, the, uh, including Safari or WebKit drivers, but the tool that they were using was uh, capable of covering only certain browsers, like uh, maybe uh, Chrome, uh, Firefox, or uh, uh, some others, but not the uh, ones that they need. This is just one particular example. But similarly, I collected several problems in terms of lots of different dimensions. Like some of them were directly related to the test automation. Some of them were uh, even related to requirement analysis and uh, related to different stages of the software testing lifecycle. I collected several problems from different people. And then I reflected these challenges to the requirements that I need in my solution. If I somehow add some features in my solution, then those will be covering with these kind of challenges and the problems. If somehow we achieve these requirements, then those challenges would be solved. So I, for each uh, pro problem, I try to map a potential or candidate solution or a proposal. So this would be the requirement, like what kind of features I should add in my solution. And then when I share this solution, the central framework to other people, their solutions or the, uh, their problems or the issues uh, would be solved. So after these requirements, of course, as I did, uh, as I explained, uh, we can do a prioritization and we can discuss or decide which one is more important than the others. So this uh, can construct our roadmap. So we can start with the most important one and one by one, we can implement these features and eventually we can get our uh, central framework ready to be shared as a testing, as a service. So this was the first stage even before starting the solution, what kind of preparations or analysis we can do. So we discussed so far the problem itself, which is the duplication and common problems faced by different people. And we discussed the solution, which would be uh, instead of trying to build a solution from scratch, just using a common approach in which all the anti-patterns or all the common problems were already solved by uh, some uh, domain experts. And for this achievement, uh, we discussed what kind of metrics I can track and what should be our roadmap, like the collecting the requirements and the prioritization. So far, so good. Now uh, I know what I do, uh, what uh, I have to do. So now, now let's see how we can implement this solution. So. This, in this part, we will discuss about building a central test automation framework. We will discuss about a test automation environment, right? So let me try to illustrate a test automation environment in which we will leverage several technologies, several test automation tools, and the test implementation and execution ways. So this is just a, a, a drawing which impacts the, which shows how the tests are executed. So the starting with the first key point, which is the reusability of uh, executing the test cases. So as I explained in the beginning, whenever I build a solution, this can be executed by several projects or several products, right? For example, whenever I'm testing a web application, I will be using this test case, but whenever I change the system under test, I should be still able to use the same features because these features should be executable, should be reusable, even I change uh, my project or the product. So the first part 
of this test automation environment is reusable workflows. These are the part of the uh, pipelines, uh, the uh, CICD pipelines, which will be triggering our test cases. So whenever the workflows are called or triggered by different uh, triggers, like it can be uh, triggered uh, due to some uh, schedules, uh, timely-based schedules, or whenever we push some uh, changes to our code repository, our pipeline can be triggered to execute test cases. So whenever this trigger works, the test execution starts, right? So the first thing test automation a framework does is to pick the relevant test cases to include in the relevant uh, test suite. Because we will have several test cases, but sometimes we will not execute all of them. Sometimes we will select a subset. We will select some of test cases. It might depend on the priority levels because we might have different uh, priority levels. So sometimes we will have only the smoke set, right? So we will have only the uh, priority zero uh, test cases. Or sometimes we will uh, include P0 plus P1. It will be a wider scope. So we will be able to pick the relevant test cases. So the first thing test automation framework does is, or the test runner does is picking or including the relevant test cases, which will be a part of the test suite. And then after doing that, the test execution starts, uh, which will be enabling the parallel execution because whenever we have several test cases, of course, we will not be executing them one by one, right? But we will enable the parallel execution. Some of the test cases will be running in parallel in different pipelines. So we will be able to decide about the number of virtual machines that we will allocate for the execution of our test cases. This will be uh, related to the resource management. I will uh, talk about it in a minute. It is related to the performance of our test execution. But at this point, what we can enable is, of course, using some or leveraging some test fixtures, like, right? Because this is a part of uh, removing or eliminating the duplication. Whenever we have some common test steps, we can move them into before or after test fixtures. Instead of including those common steps in, inside the test cases, we can move them into the before all, which is uh, running before all the test suites, or before each, which is running each individual test case. This will be a part of implementing test fixtures. So this is one key point to uh, make some reusable test cases. And after enabling this, the test cases will be running in parallel uh, suites. And uh, one important, one more important point here is the visibility of the test execution details. We should be collecting all the artifacts and all the evidences, including the maybe the uh, screenshots whenever the test fails, because we should be able to understand what went wrong when the test case failed. So if it is a UI automation, we should take the snapshot. So we should see the screenshot of uh, at the failure point. And not only the screenshot, but also the logs and all the other evidences and the artifacts. And we will be reporting that into the dashboard that we will be uh, building. And in this way, we will be able to do a comprehensive analysis to make our uh, failure analysis, to understand what are the root causes for the failing test cases. Sometimes they will be failing due to the product issues. Those will be the bugs, real bugs. But sometimes instead of, uh, or rather than real bugs, we will be ha having some test smells. We will be the failure stemming from the test code itself, not product. Those are not real bugs, but uh, some uh, uh, false alarms. So in that case, we will be understanding the problems stemming from the test code, and we will be maintaining and fixing those kind of issues uh, in the test code. So this is a very brief uh, explanation or uh, uh, just uh, drawing uh, depiction of the test automation framework. But in this framework, in this environment, we will be leveraging different technologies. For example, starting from the uh, programming language that we use, we should decide about several technologies, right? For example, what programming language should I use to implement my uh, test code or the test uh, automation? Or even after programming language, what kind of frameworks should I, what kind of test runner uh, should I use? M maybe if we are talking about UI automation or E2E test automation, should it be Playwright? Should it be Cypress? Should it be Selenium? W what kind of technologies or frameworks or libraries should I leverage in my environment? So this requires a benchmarking. 
So we need to do a comprehensive analysis to decide about the best tools. Because previously we discussed if we somehow decide in the, or pick a wrong uh, option, like if we select one automation tool, which does not support executing our web uh, UI automation test cases on Safari browser, for example. And if we need to execute them on Safari, then of course the test tool that we picked would not be meeting our requirements, right? So deciding about the correct tool is a very important decision. And of course, not only the browsers uh, that we are executing our test cases on, but also there are several decision criteria, like even the execution speed. Some of the tools are running slower compared to the others, or uh, in some of them, even the ease of coding or even the uh, understandability of the code, the ease of uh, readability of the code is different than the others. So these are all different decision criteria. So in that regard, I will not uh, recommend any specific tool. I will not say this one is the best, but what I would say is you should decide your own choice depending on your requirements. Like, first of all, you should understand what kind of features you need. Like sometimes there are some uh, very tricky features, like maybe opening a new tab, opening a new, uh, new page, or dealing with uh, drop-down menu items, or maybe uh, pop-up windows, uh, alert windows. These are uh, very tricky uh, features. Some of the tools or the frameworks are not capable of uh, handling these kind of features or issues. So the important point here is understanding what kind of features you will have to implement and on what kind of browsers or what kind of execution platforms you have to execute or perform your test executions. After doing all this requirement analysis, you should uh, do this benchmarking study and you can uh, pick the best uh, option, the best tool uh, or the uh, library or the framework set which will be meeting your requirement. So personally, what I did is after doing my uh, own requirement analysis uh, to gain a developer experience, I picked one test scenario and I implement the same scenario with all the several options that I was considering. For example, I was having five different options and eventually I would uh, I, I was uh, supposed to pick one of them. So I implement the same test case with all the options. And then I was already understanding which one is uh, capable of meeting my uh, requirements and the needs. And eventually I did a uh, comparison as well in terms of the execution speed. Like whenever I was executing locally and whenever I was executing on the pipelines, what was the execution duration? So I, I made all these comparisons and eventually I picked the uh, relevant test uh, framework and the libraries that I would leverage in my test execution environment. So after deciding all this architecture and the components of the test automation framework, there are some certain quality dimensions that we should keep in mind before we start implementing our features. These are all the, maybe the non-functional aspects of the quality, right? Because we are not talking about only functionality, but there are several non-functional aspects of the quality. For example, if we are having, or if we are building a test framework, test automation framework, it should be flexible, integrable, uh, scalable, and it should be supporting, uh, picking different priority levels. And of course it should be reliable, and its performance should be good enough, like uh, what, what would be the resource consumption. And whenever we do some uh, multiple executions, what is the execution speed or uh, what number of virtual machines or memory we need to uh, complete this execution. And of course, whenever we uh, are implementing our solutions, what is the understandability of the code? What is the readability of the code? Whenever we share with some other people, would they be easily understanding this code? Because if it is not easy to implement on top of the central framework, then people will not use it, right? They will struggle to use it. They will struggle to understand if we don't have the transparency, if we don't have the documentation and troubleshooting features in the central framework that we are sharing to people, people will not use it. So these are the important dimensions. The, uh, this part I'm uh, skipping a little bit fast because if we talk about, discuss about all these dimensions in detail, it will be a different, uh, maybe a talk topic. So I will uh, just highlight different dimensions that we should keep in mind 
but uh, after that uh, just uh, whenever we are uh, developing some different features we should uh, consider if we are meeting these kind of quality dimensions or not so this will be uh, the last part of the implementation and let's see even if so far we saw uh, the problem and the solution and the implementation so if we implement such kind of central framework and if we share this to other people or to the other teams as a testing as a service then what will we have how can we understand the benefits or the advantages of uh, this, this solution or a service which we share to other people so our motivation was speeding up the implementation right so what i did in these terms to understand if this a solution was contributing to uh, speed up the implementation. So first, I analyzed what was the components of the implementation. For example, this was uh, just one uh, test case, which was a UI automation case. And uh, the, in Jira, which was uh, the tool that I was using to track my issues, the project management tool, uh, I had some uh, tickets to uh, complete this implementation. And inside the ticket, I have some subtasks, like, for example, to complete this automation, first of all, I should define all the locators on the web page that I was supposed to automate. And then after I uh, define all the locators, I should complete the test steps one by one by uh, implementing all the algorithms and the features that I need to implement. And for that, I realized that there are lots of several options. For example, whenever I was figuring out the locators or the selectors, to uh, pick the elements on the page or the components of the web page, I could use several different options. For example, on this right hand side of the slide, I uh, put uh, lots of different uh, options. So I realized when I was trying to do that, I was spending some time to do this analysis, like which approach should I use? Even the type of the locator or the selector, right? Uh, for example, should I use the XPAD or the CSS pad? or the IDs of the elements. Of course, most probably the, using the IDs is the best option if the elements have any, but if they don't have any specific unique IDs, I should use some different ways. Like I should use the X path of the elements or CSS path or lots of different features uh, or attributes of the elements, right? But which one is the best? So trying to do that analysis, I was spending some time. And then I was spending some time to implement the test steps because test scenario is composed of different steps and I had to implement all those steps. So I, the, these were the points where I was spending some time. So I will track these uh, tasks on which I need some time to complete. But first of all, let me show you how it looks like. For example, on the uh, left hand side, uh, you can see uh, how a test case looks like if I uh, try to implement that from scratch, if I uh, try to figure out all the locators, and if I uh, try to automate all the user uh, interactions, like clicking the, uh, to the buttons or providing the key inputs uh, to the text fields or uh, all the other user inputs and performing the user actions and eventually doing the uh, assertions. But on the right hand side, instead of uh, trying to implement everything from scratch, the uh, person just can, the tester can just call the relevant function from the uh, central framework. So we want to just, uh, 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 from the uh, example that I shared previously, uh, we were trying to uh, locate a button and click that and uh, try to assert the label on the button to match a specific expected string, uh, expected text, right? So I'm just passing two parameters, like which uh, button I want to locate and which uh, text that I want to see on the button. So these are the two parameters that I'm calling the relevant function uh, from the test automation framework, the central framework that I shared to different people. So when I measure the outcome, the uh, results, I saw that like previously, if I implement everything from scratch, I was spending two hours in average to define all the locators on a web page. Whenever I have a new web page to automate, I was uh, spending around two uh, hours. This is not uh, taken only from one task, but uh, I uh, pulled several tasks from Jira and I took the average uh, time that I'm spending on these kind of 
uh, tasks or the issues. So my result was I was spending two hours to locate the elements or the locators. And then I was spending three hours in average to complete the test automation. So five hours was the total uh, duration that I was spending to complete my test automation. And then I tried to measure the same duration that I uh, sp uh, spent to complete my automation by using the central framework. Then I figured out that I was spending only 30 minutes to spend the uh, uh, to uh, complete a similar uh, test automation because I already have all the elements on the web page because it's already known and uh, I already have the common features like whenever I try to do a GraphQL query the uh, specific uh, the relevant feature is already inside the framework so I, I don't have to uh, implement that from scratch but I can just use the uh, relevant function from the framework right so this was from five hours to uh, 30 minutes. Uh, this is uh, the outcome and the benefit of using this uh, central framework. And on top of that, as I explained previously, we can include several additional features. Like I can already include some features to improve the monitoring activities in the framework. And we can already build some dashboards. So just to uh, give you an insight about what kind of features or dashboards we can include, I'm sharing some examples. These are different dashboards which we can use uh, as an example. These are just some visuals to uh, give you a better understanding of what kind of metrics or analysis or monitoring uh, tools we can use during our execution or implementation activities. And uh, of course, the last part of the serve, like uh, after we uh, complete our uh, building uh, the solution and we share to other people, of course, the training, the documentation, is a, another part of supporting uh, the other people that uh, we are sharing our solution. Uh, and eventually, we will be completing our achievements. So just to wrap up what we discussed so far, we are discussing about building a central test automation framework, which can be interpreted as a testing as a service, because we are talking about common problems which can be encountered by several uh, teams. Sometimes we are not aware of what other people, uh, what other teams are doing, right? In especially big organizations. Sometimes I'm struggling with a problem. And then after a long time, I eventually figured out that some other people all, already had that issue long time ago already, but I don't know it because uh, we, we are not using a standard approach. So we are trying to duplicate the solutions. So this is a duplication of the code. This is a duplication of the effort. This is not an efficient way to do that. So our proposal was developing a central framework, central uh, test implementation and automation and execution way, and sharing to all the other people and other teams in our organizations. So we discussed how we can uh, uh, define or design our architecture and uh, what kind of quality dimensions we can keep in mind to implement our features and eventually what kind of monitoring activities and uh, what kind of metrics we can track to understand if the uh, solution is really uh, making some advantage or uh, having some benefits in terms of our achievements. So I guess uh, this was the end of slides. I'm uh, leaving some socials. If you don't have any time to answer the questions, please uh, feel free to reach out to me. But if we have some uh, time, we can go over the questions if we have any, Safe. Great, thank you for the session, Mesut. Unfortunately, we're over the time. So we don't have time for the questions, but there are very interesting questions in the Q&A section. So I request you all to please uh, pose these questions in the Lambda test community and you can get the answers. You can reach out to Mesut as well via sure. LinkedIn. And yes, but indeed, Mesut, that was a really, really insightful session. That was amazing. Thank you. Thank so you. Much. Thanks. Great. Thanks, Thanks everyone for joining us. Uh, see you in the next session. Have a great day ahead. Bye.